Hello, everyone. <clears throat> I want to thank you for joining me for today's edition of Arkansas Alive. We're going to continue with our series on the power of the tongue. But on Friday, I feel like I want to deal with a topic that has been um, around for a long time. And that's the wealth of the sinner laid up for the just, a financial inversion. I think there's a lot of people that don't understand that. And Friday, I want to read you some prophetic utterance about it. And I want you to uh, follow me as we look at the scripture. So that's on Friday. That's something for you to mark on your calendar. Uh, Pastor Carl was going to talk about the financial inversion and what that means. But today we're going to continue with the power of the tongue. So stay tuned. Arkansas Live starts right now. You know, I'd like to go back to um, our text that we started with in Proverbs 18, 22, uh, excuse me, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. They that love it refers to those that love that the fact that the power of the tongue will produce life and it will produce death if you don't love it or if you don't understand it. So my job here today and all week is to keep you in the positive side of the Word of God, teaching you that there is power in the words that you say. Now, we're not just talking about my name's Jimmy. I'll take all you can give me in my name. Uh, I'm, I'm claiming uh, millions of dollars and a new car and all. That. That's not what he's talking about. He's not talking about materialism or greed. He's talking about an operating system, and you can get my book, The Word System. At the end of the broadcast, I'll show you how you can get your copy. And I realized not too long after I was saved that God operates under a word system. So the power of the tongue, there's life and there's death in the power of the tongue. You can, you can speak life or you can speak death, but people that don't know any better, they don't take advantage. I love the fact that I have the power of God's word. I'm, I'm empowered to speak it out of my mouth. That's what he says. If you uh, love it, you'll eat the fruit thereof. Now let's go back over to Genesis chapter one and let's reestablish um, the fact that God created us in his image and likeness and he created us a speaking spirit. Uh, let's look at verse uh, 26, chapter 1, verse 26. God said, let's make man in our image after our likeness and let man, the species of man, have dominion. And then in verse 27, he said, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And he blessed them. God blessed man. He created him in his image and likeness, meaning he created man a speaking spirit. Man was created in the image and likeness of God in that he was a spirit being. Unfortunately, too few Christians know this. I've, I've heard preachers even say that we're just uh, soul and body. No, we are a spirit being. We have a soul and we live in a body. We're a triune being. We're three parts, spirit, soul, and body. And so he created a man in his image so he could fellowship with him, so he could operate in his system. His system is a system of words, speaking powerful, creative words. And he created man and he blessed them. And he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and take dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, every living thing that moves upon the world. And he said, I've created you to take dominion over my creation. And the last verse we'll read here uh, in review. And God said, I've given you every herb bearing seed or seeding seed. I've given you everything that you will need. And he goes on to say, for plenty, for abundance, for enough, more than enough. And you, you, after you meditate on this a while, you understand God created man in his own image to speak creative words, to speak the creative power of God, God's words. That's, what's, that's where the power is. 
and to be a speaking spirit. And you see Adam starting to operate in that word system when he speaks and prophesies the ordination of marriage. And you just read a few chapters over. It said, he said, this is bone of my bone, talking about uh, Eve, talking about uh, his wife. And this is bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman. He prophesied the ordination of marriage. He did this many other times through the scriptures. Then we see Joshua speaking to the son. We see different uh, manifestations of God's creation speaking things into existence. Jesus cursed the fig tree and told it to dry up from the roots. The disciples were amazed. And Jesus said, I say unto you, if you say to the mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast in the sea, not doubt in your heart, but believe those things which you say. You see, he was transferring <clears throat> this speaking spirit, this word system uh, to uh, born again believers. That's where we come in. We realize that we now have a system of operation. We're not God, but we're made in his image and likeness. And we have the, not only the authority, but we have the equipment to speak creative words, the power of the tongue. See, the tongue is hooked to the spirit. Now let's pick up, and, and I want to deal with this today. Um, I, I want to give you some I want to give you some notes that you can write down. <clears throat> Your words and the way you speak become either a blessing or a curse to you. Your words. Now, we've already dealt with the process of putting the word in your heart. You have to speak the word in your heart. And then out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When you get the word in your heart and you mix it with faith then it comes out with power. Go to Luke's gospel and let's go to, um, I think it's Luke 6, 45. Let's look at Luke 6, 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. Now that lines up with Matthew uh, 12, 37, where it says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. And an evil man uh, out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. In other words, what's in you in abundance is going to come out of your mouth. So be warned that uh, what you're hearing and seeing, if you let it get in your heart, and you become cynical, negative, uh, and you begin to think the evil thoughts, the, the poor thoughts, the sick thoughts, uh, the, the down, downward falls points. If you begin to think um, there's no hope, there's no remedy, if you begin to think the negative and you get that in your heart, that's what's going to come out of your mouth. You will agree with the negative confession. You will agree with the negative doctor's report. I remember, and I remind you, uh, Jeannie uh, illustrated this, and she wrote it in her book, uh, Learning to Trust God's Faithfulness, when we were in a car wreck, I think 1988, so it's been a long time. And the, the impact, a big truck hit us from the back, broke her back in three places, and the doctors wanted to operate and put three rods in her back the size of this pen. And she said, no. <laughs> They thought she was still in shock. No, she wasn't in shock. She just had the presence, what was in her heart in abundance, the spirit of God, the word of God. And she said, no, my God will heal me. And she did not have the surgery. Nothing wrong with the surgery. Uh, but she found out later from a, a girl that had had that type of surgery. And she said those three rods that they put in there they got to come out sometime. And so she said, you were right not to have it. And God healed her and God touched her. But what was coming out of her mouth was what was in her heart. And she said, God loves me and I love God and God will heal me. That was what was in her heart in abundance. 
And that's what came out. Your words and the way you speak become either a blessing or a curse to you. Now, continual confession of God's word. Now, I'm sharing notes with you that, that I have written and taught many, many years ago. But the word of God is still powerful and strong. Continual confession of God's word into your spirit builds faith, health, and prosperity. This is probably um, the key to many of your uh, problems, prayers that haven't been answered is because you don't feel like you're worthy to be healed. You don't feel like you're worthy to prosper. But when you get the word on the inside of you, it builds faith for you to believe God for what he's already done. According to the scriptures, 1 Peter 2, 24, you were healed by the stripes of Jesus. N not, not, not you're going to be healed sometime. You were healed by the stripes of Jesus previously uh, when Jesus became your sin substitute and he took the stripes upon his back so you could be healed. And Peter gave us that revelation. So you might be thinking, uh, God's going to heal me. God's going to heal me. But there's, there's got to be a foundation, a revelation to the fact he's already healed me. I'm already healed. God has already blessed me. He's already, already prospered me. He's already made a way for me. But I keep confessing the word of God. <laughs> By his stripes, I'm healed. By his stripes, I'm healed. I have given and it is given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, show men given my bosom. You've got that on the inside of you. That's past tense. He's already done it. That's the legal side of redemption. The grace side of redemption is what God's already done for you. Even though you didn't deserve it. You're not deserving it really has nothing to do with it. He didn't do it because you deserved it. He didn't do it because of anything you did. He, did, he, he didn't provide healing and health and prosperity for you uh, because you fasted so many days, you prayed so many hours a day. Uh, <laughs> you can get into all kinds of legalism and think God owes you something. He doesn't owe you anything. He didn't do it because he owed you. He did it because he loved you. And you have to receive that, begin to confess it. Listen to it. Continual confession of God's word into your spirit will build faith, health, and prosperity. Now, let's go over to Job 22. Uh, th I think this is going to be a <laughs> um, explosion on the inside of you coming from Job. Job 22, 28. Now, listen to this. You shall decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. Now, th think about this. Say it over and over. Meditate it. You shall decree a thing, and it shall be established to you. The more you confess God's word into your spirit, the more you say it, the more you hear it, the more it becomes established in your spirit. This is, this is not mind over matter. This is not memory verses. You're saying the word over and over to get it on the inside of you. You decree a thing. You declare a thing, and it shall be established unto you. When it becomes established in your heart, that's when you speak forth creative words of power. You cannot convince me that it's not God's will to heal me. You cannot convince me that he hasn't healed me because I have decreed that thing. I have declared that thing. I have confessed that thing. He said, well, Pastor Caldwell, have you ever been sick? Of course, any, everybody has at one time or another. But you, you don't base your confession on what you've experienced in the past. You don't base your confession on mistakes or failures. You base your confession on God's word and what he did for you, what he promised for you. God will not allow me to be tempted above that that I'm able to deal with. But along with the temptation, he'll make the way for me to ex to escape it. That's your confession. And you continually confess that 
into your spirit. <clears throat> and it builds faith, health, and prosperity. Now in, uh, let's see, John six sixty three, it says the word that I speak is life and spirit. The words that I speak, Jesus said, are spirit and life. So you must speak God's word to your individual circumstances. That means you can talk to the tree like Jesus talked to the tree. You can talk to the sickness like Jesus talked to the sickness. The Bible says that Jesus rebuked Peter's mother-in-law's fever. He, he talked to the fever. He talked to a fig tree. He spoke to the fig tree. He spoke to the winds and the waves out on the Sea of Galilee. This is evidence of the word system. This is how God operates. And when you realize it, you're born again, filled with the Spirit, and you realize and get that revelation of the power of the tongue, you begin to speak that way too. But let me caution you. Don't just run out here and start saying a bunch of stuff before the time that it has become a revelation in your spirit. I had a man in California one time in a meeting. He came up to me after uh, the service and he said, Brother Caldwell, he said, I've confessed 365 times that I had a new, cut, new Cadillac and I never have gotten one. <laughs> and I said, well, brother, it's not the number of times that you say something that creates. <clears throat> it's not the number of times you say you have something that makes it manifest. I said, you, you confess the word of God in your spirit, into your heart, parable of the sower, the heart, the spirit receives the word. And then you release your faith after you've built this into your spirit. You've, you've built up your faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more you hear it. When I first got saved and I was studying this and I learned, I made a tape. Now, this was in the early 70s and there were no cassette tapes. There were no CDs. There were no DVDs. You just had reel to reel, a little quarter inch reel to reel tape. And I had a tape recorder in my office and I would sit there at the desk. I found all the scriptures that dealt with everything that I would ever need or ever face, uh, beginning with the uh, uh, healing, deliverance, prosperity, whatever it was. And I made a tape. I sat there at my uh, radio console and I had all the scriptures lined out and I turned the mic on and I began to confess. Jesus is made unto me wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Jesus bore my sicknesses and diseases. By Jesus' stripes, I was healed. I have given and it is given to me. And I just went down the list. I had pages of them. And I don't know how long it took, but I made that tape. And every morning I would go into my little office, which was actually a bedroom with, with a door over two file cabinets. That's what it was. <laughs> and I would go in, I'd turn the tape recorder on and I would listen to myself. I would play back what I had recorded. What was I doing? I was sowing the word into my spirit, the parable of the sower. I was sowing the word into my spirit. My spirit's like the ground. And I was sowing God's word into my spirit. Now, in the meantime, at the same time that I was sowing this into my spirit, I was hearing it with my ear. And the, the words that I had recorded on tape came out, went in my ear, went down into my spirit. It made a cycle. It came up. I spoke them out of my mouth. I heard it. It went into my ear. It was renewing my mind. It was changing the way I think. And it was going into my spirit. So I guess basically you could say I was watering my well. I was, I was filling my spirit up with the Word of God. And I did that every day until, you know, I didn't even need the, the, the tape anymore. In fact, I took my Bible at that time and I transposed all of those things those confessions and I put them on the inside cover of my Bible so that wherever I was at whatever time I could open my Bible and I could make these confessions. And I made them over and over and over and over. Well, they got in me. They got in my spirit. 
So when any external situation, any external object, any external threat came at me, what do you think I did? What do you think came out of the abundance of my heart? The Word of God. It came out at the time of tragedy. It came out at the time of temptation. It came out at the time of uh, frustration. <laughs> it came out at the time of uh, sickness and disease. It came out at the time of poverty. <laughs> oh, we had many opportunities. In fact, when we first started in the ministry, uh, you know, we had a lot of financial needs because, you know, we were just getting started. We didn't have any money. We were believing God for everything we needed. And we would sow our seed and we would confess the word over our seed. And it didn't look like it was working. I remember when I first started tithing. And by the way, <laughs> tithing is still relevant for today. I know there are a lot of people that think it isn't. Uh, but Matthew 23, 23 is the New Testament. And Jesus said, you ought to tithe. Tithe is the tenth. It's 10%. And God created it so you would come into the storehouse where you get your spiritual food and you would give him a tenth of your increase. Isaac stated that in the Old Testament. He said, Lord, if you will bless me, I will give you a tenth. So the, the tithe has been around longer than the law. The tithe existed before the law, during the law, and after the law. So don't let that throw you or anybody telling you you don't, you don't need to tithe. Oh, oh God's not going to get you. You're not going to, uh, the devil's not going to attack you uh, because you are not tithing, but you won't get the benefit of the tithe. God said he'd open the heavens, pour out a blessing upon you, not room enough to receive it. And he would rebuke the devourer. You know, I think many times about our partners. Let me just say this to you. We are so appreciative of you because we could not do what we are doing without you. So your partnership with VTN is so important. And those of you that are giving to VTN on a regular basis, month after month, when you sow that seed into VTN, you're depositing into your bank account, your spiritual and your physical bank account. God keeps a record. I've done this for years. I give every month. Now, my tithe is over and above. My, I, I'm giving over and above my tithe. My tithe goes to my church, but I'm giving to help ministries just like VTN. And I do it every month. And God blesses me back every month. Same way you, uh, the same, Luke 6, 38, same way you give it, it's going to come back to you. So I want you to know how much we appreciate you. And I want to thank you uh, for your giving. Because I know many of you depend on VTN for your spiritual food. So if you are not a partner, if you've not given to VTN, I want you to go online, vtntv.com. And you can uh, text to give. You can click on give. You can mail your uh, offering to VTN, Box 26207, Little Rock, 72221. Uh, and let me give you that text to give number again. A lot of people are doing this now. You can text to give. Text 501-214-4462. Area 501-214-4462. It's very simple. You just text how much you want to give. You can click online. You go to the website, vtntv.com, and click on Give. Say, I want to partner with VTN. Uh, VTN's been a great resource in my life, and I want to give back. Or you can mail uh, an offering monthly, one time, P.O. Box 26207, Little Rock, 72221. Thank you, partner. Thank you all the folks that give, and uh, we appreciate it so much, whether you're giving uh, on a monthly basis or a one-time gift or the Lord speaks to you or, or whatever. We had a lady years ago, uh, and the uh, receptionist brought me uh, this. No, I'll take that back. She called accounting, and there was a lady that drove up to the office, and she came in and put a brown paper sack on the receptionist's desk. And she said, I want this to go to VTN. And she said, well, well what is it? She said, it's, it's my offering. She said, well, wait a minute. Let me uh, get your name. She said, no, I don't, I don't, I don't need a, a receipt. I don't. And the receptionist called accounting and she brought 
the money uh, up to her, and that sack was full of money. I think there was something like $30,000, $40,000 in it, something like that. <laughs> and I told I told the accounting department, I called our CPA, I said, this just happened. What should we do? He said, well, put it in your safe and hold it for a few days. And if you see the police drive up, you'll know it was drug money or something like that. Well, that's what we did. Nobody ever showed up. She did not want a receipt. She did not want anybody to know her name. She just came up and put a brown paper sack on the desk. It's like thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, something like that. And I want, I want this to go to, to VTN. Now, while we rejoiced and <laughs> had a hallelujah time, that has, that has not happened uh, on a regular basis. Be wonderful it did, but it doesn't. What happens on a regular basis is you giving X amount of dollars a month. Some of you give 58 a month, 30 a month, 25 a month, whatever the Lord's laid on your heart. That monthly support is what keeps us going. So I want to thank you for your giving. Do we have time to, to let people know how they can get uh, this Word System book? No, okay. Uh, we'll do it tomorrow. And let me remind you that um, on Friday, I want to share with you uh, about prophetic words, about the end time wealth transfer, wealth of the center laid up for the just, financial inversion. You've probably heard things like that over the years. And some of you are confused. You don't know what that means. Um, is, is God just going to rob from the center and give to me? No. <laughs> Ro robbing is not part of God's DNA. That's not what he does. But the Bible does speak uh, the fact that the wealth that the sinner has enjoyed was really laid up for the just. It, it was, it, God didn't create this wealth for the sinner. He created it for the righteous. But the righteous have basically said, I reject that. I don't think we're supposed to prosper. I don't want to hear any more about that. So Friday, I'm going to explain some things and give you some scripture and uh, understanding on this. So be sure and join me for Friday's Arkansas Live. Join me tomorrow. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and where you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at vtntv.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at vtntv.com.